Welcome everyone to the 2022-2023 Bay Area Urban Debate League season. My name is Mathino. I am the program manager, one of the program managers for the Bay Area Urban Debate League, and I host this particular skill-based practice on Thursdays. And so we have some of our students here who are in this debate practice with me today. And so um, before we get started with our actual um, instruction that I have prepared, I just want to do a quick icebreaker. And so um, I'll do a fun one. So my icebreaker for today is if you could be in any show, um, like TV show, what TV show would you want to be on? We'll start with Ella. Okay. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I would want to play a creepy character. I probably wouldn't be good on it, good at it, but I would want to play a creepy character. So maybe I'd want to be on like, I don't know, just like, um, I would be on like one of those political shows that like also like really, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, you know, those political shows like Madam Secretary or something like that. I'd be on one of those shows, but like an evil character. Okay, a few people are coming into the room. Um, we'll go with um, Genesis. You wanna go next? I would probably go with Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I really love that show. Okay, I haven't, some of these shows I haven't heard about yet. Um, Daniel? Um, I would probably go on some kind of game show, preferably with as much chance as possible to try to get some money. That's smart. Um, Sam? Um, maybe guest star on like SNL would be my dream. That'd be fun. Or host SNL, I suppose. Okay, so we're doing the icebreaker, Mr. Gonzalez and Harper. So the icebreaker for today um, is if you could be on any TV show, what would you be? What TV show would you be on? So first we'll go with Harper. Uh, I'm not really sure. Do you not watch TV? Uh, I don't watch that much TV. Okay, Mr. Gonzalez. You're muted. Uh, Project Runway. Um, I've been binge watching it, so I would definitely want to wear, you know, menswear, you know. Um, I'm just like that. Um, make it work. Love, make it love. work. Yep. I'm like, make it work. <laughs> so, yep. Project did Runway. We, did we get everyone? All right. So, I guess for me, um, it would be two shows. Um, it would be like um, fairly odd parents because they have the people, the little fairy, the fairies that can grant people wishes. And I would want to be like Timmy's best friend and go on like crazy adventures. And then if not for fairly odd parents, then I would, I would do some like kind of game show, maybe like that game show that, um, what's the guy's name? Um, I forgot what his name, but they wear the, where they wear the costumes. And it comes on right. Let's make a deal. I, let's make a deal. Yes, I will be on that show because it's like crazy, quirk, quirky, crazy like myself. And so, yeah. How did you guess? Let's make a deal off of Mathino say those guys with the costumes. That's because <laughs> I'm a game awesome. show nut, and I've been watching game shows since I was like seven. Oh my! And they wear costumes. Dude, and I watch old episodes of Monty Hall. Let's make a deal. <laughs> All right, so that was pretty fun. So um, we'll get started on today's coursework. So today we'll be going over like card cutting and briefing. Oops, this thing always does this when I'm trying to do this. Hold on, let me figure this out. Uh, let's see. Um, all right, card cutting and briefing. So basically, um, what is card cutting and briefing? 
Um, this is something important to like really think about, especially if you want to have autonomy in your own debate career. Um, of course, you know, Bottle, we create files for you all. A lot of times we get files from um, um, other um, debate organizations, i.e. NADO or the National Debate Coaches Association, or, or it could be from the National Catholic Forens Forensic League, whatever. Um, but, and sometimes, you know, we have the free, de the, the free debate project free debate evidence project online which is also with um the national debate coaches association <laughs> so if you um aren't familiar about those uh particular places where to find evidence of course we can talk about that um another time and it's really easy if you join us on slack of course we place all the electronic and digital copies of the evidence via slack so please join us on slack also, too, um, because you'll be on Slack, there will be links posted for our Google Drives where you'll see all the updated evidence, all the amended evidence, and all the evidence that has been corrected. So please make sure that you are on Slack so you can get the um, announcements about the updates on our evidence, as well as because, I, as I've just told Sam, I'm cutting my own evidence that will be available to you all. Um, there's already been one particular file that me and Jonah worked on, but um, this this file will be, it'll come out sometime at the end of December or something, but there'll be some um, additional files coming out here soon. So yeah, moving on with today's subject about card cutting. So, you know, like I said, having, um, you know, we create evidence for you all, which is great, but it's really important to try to consider of cutting and creating your own evidence. And again, have an agency and an autonomy over the arguments that you use in the debate, but also to having power and ownership of the words that you use in debate. Because if you have studied it, you've read the book through and through, or if you read that literature through and through, you know every end of what you're talking about. And so it makes it harder for someone to be like, well, why is this particular evidence you know, crucial to this debate? Why does this person have expertise on this particular su subject? You know through and through why this person has and based on reading their studies and their data, you know, you can be able to support that particular author and your arguments better. So um, when cutting cards, you can um, consider these tips. First of all, um, don't ask me about verbatim because I don't know how to use verbatim, but um, I have downloaded, I have tried to use it. Um, there are YouTube videos on how to use verbatim. Um, if you need to look at any resource, like how I post these particular practices via um, YouTube, other debate organization and other debate uh, programs, they post um, resources made available to students um, on YouTube as well. So you should be able to find information about verbatim. Verbatim is a add-on add -on application. So you must have Microsoft Word first, and then you add verbatim onto your Microsoft Word. Um, and it does different functions that help you be able to cut cards. Um, it allows you to be able to streamline, being able to read through um, different constructive speeches. It helps you be able to do block and uh, do block writing, frontline um, formatting and stuff like that. Um, so please download verbatim. Again, I, Sam gets on to me about like cutting cards. As y'all know, I cut cards the old school way. So um, don't ask me about verbatim. I just know it's something that you can use, okay? I don't, I use paper and scissors, okay? So that's just me as a debater. Um, but if you are someone who works digitally, consider using verbatim and find those resources via YouTube. Um, also too, you can also use Microsoft Word and Adobe um, in order to cut cards. Um, um, th there is certain features. If you have a certain professional form of Adobe, uh, Adobe allows you to transfer text into Microsoft Word. Sometimes it doesn't if you don't have the, the correct um, program or if you don't have the correct um, professional subscription for Adobe. Um, so if you need to do, if you're really interested in card cutting and you want that um, subscription, that professional subscription, and that is the way you want to cut your cards, is through Adobe um, and you need to use Adobe, you can always fill out a technology request form because sometimes there's a cost to that. Verbatim is free, so you don't have to worry about um, verbatim. Also too, um, when thinking about like where to find evidence, using scholarly databases are really important. 
um, check with your library, your local library, or you can also check with um, libraries that are funded that are funded by the state. A lot of state schools, um, libraries that are open to the public and they have library databases that you can um, use in order to um, start researching. So um, some of the um, scholarly databases that has academic journals, data, um, you know, stuff that has data, numbers and stuff like qualitative and quantitative journals, um, JSTOR, you have um, um, LexisNexis, that's another one that I didn't put on here. Google Scholars um, is another one. Um, but these are places where you can find academic writings. You can find books and more literature and digital PDF form as well. Um, so if you're one of those people who do not like to like cut cards the manual way, if you're much like some of the debaters who like to work digitally, using those scholar scholarly databases is a good way to find books that are that are on PDF form so that you don't have to take out a, a, a scissors and pens and stuff like that. You can just cut it via that PDF that you can get from that um, academic database. Again, like I said, find a library, um, community center, you know, those places that have academic books. Like I said, state school, state universities is another place you can look to find academic works. Remember that the evidence that we use in the debate is not intended for policy debate. So like, you know, I'm cutting this book now from Paulo Freire. This is a book particularly about education. It, is, it has nothing to do with like policy debate. Yes, we use policy debate in order for us to gain education and learn more, but he did not write this book in the intention of it being used for the purpose of debate. And most authors, they're not familiar with policy debate as a, as a, as a formal um, forum or a formal debate style. So, you know, really understand that you have to kind of you know, um, tailor the arguments to fit the different parts that we have in debate so that you can use those different parts in debate to, to, to tell the story that is intended um, by the author, but also meets the functions of, you know, of our, of our debate needs. You know, you know, if you're writing a car, if you, if you need something to fill inherency or harms or solvency, you know, you want to make sure that, um, that you remember what those things mean and that you gear your evidence to uh, be tagged and cut in such a way. Um, the briefs that you make should be easily read, organized and formatted in a way that makes it easily able to manage. You know what it answers. You know if it's an extension. You should know if this is a constructive argument. You should know if it's responding to a, per a particular team. You should know if it's responding generic. Like you should have it formatted so you know it's, and you should have it formatted so that if your partner needs to read it or someone on your team needs to read it or if you're sharing evidence, it's easy for you to be able to understand, you know, what this particular brief or frontline is for. Um, and cutting physical books is kind of impressive. I have to say, like, like I would always get speaker points because I'd be like, I'm gonna go straight to page 97, you know, instead of, and I would cut the actual book digitally and or physically, um, but I would still read from a book. It's just, it's just really impressive. I hate to say it, but like, it's like, oh, you really, really did your research. You're really, really immersed within a topic. You really did your homework. So um, don't be afraid to like, not just use any form of literature, not just an academic journal, not just a periodical, not just a news article, but also like lean into books. You know, books have a lot to give. And I think that if you don't pay attention to what's happening within the world right now, they're trying to eradicate books from school systems. Like literally they're doing that. So please, 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 let's make sure that we keep books alive. Um, so what do you think about when choosing evidence? How do you choose evidence when you're thinking about cutting it? Well, what, first of all, you need to think, does the art, does the text speak to you? Does the text stand out as a standing piece of writing? Does it seem to be really speaking to what you need to speak to? Is it using similar words? Or is it using the same ideas? Like, you know, does the text speak to you? Is the text provocative, right? Like, you know, you want to ensure that it speaks to the the meat and potatoes of the discussion that you want to have. So is it really getting to the cr crux of what the public feels, what the public is discussing? You know, is it provocative? Does the text illuminate the concepts? 
Um, does the text illuminate the concepts or arguments that you're trying to portray? Um, so yeah, um, is it really um, conveying the message that you're trying to convey? Is it really telling a story? Is it really providing the, um, the foundations for the arguments that you're trying to make? Because remember, text and the cards that we use are there to support your larger story. Is the source legitimate? Does that particular author have credence, expertise in order to talk about that particular topic? Does the, um, does the, um, can they provide any type of qualitative scholarship, whether that's within numbers, whether they did a study, whether they looked at people's behavior, whatever? Does your source fulfill your parts? Remember in debate, we have different parts as I've talked about prior um, in this video. Um, we have disadvantages where you have, well, in a disadvantage, you have uniqueness, link, right? Is it fulfilling a uniqueness? Is it fulfilling a, a link? Is it fulfilling an impact? Is it fulfilling any of your stock issues if you're affirmative? Is it fulfilling your solvency? Is it fulfilling your inherency? So, you know, what does that card do in, partic in particular to the structures of debate? Does it help you impact something out? Does it help you turn an argument? Like, what does that text do for you in the debate? You should know the purpose and the utility of your text, right? And if you don't know the purpose and utility of your text, then you're doing yourself a disservice of reading it in the first place. Like, it should, the the re evidence you, should re you read should have significance and it should be have purpose in debate. Rules to cutting cards. Um, don't cut one sentence. It's not worth it. Um, cut more than a paragraph. So if you can, I, I don't know if you can see it here, but like when I, I you can't see it because it's like, okay, I did you can't see it. But <laughs> when you cut, you should cut more than a paragraph. And I do think I have an example at the end of this presentation. We'll show you at the end of the uh, presentation what I'm talking about. You should cut at least a paragraph. So is it going to show this book? It's not going to show this book. Okay, it's not. Okay, it's not going to do it. All right. Anyway, moving on. But again, cut more than one sentence you should cut about a paragraph honestly you should cut three it should be about three paragraphs that's in my opinion some it depends if the if the if the text is really good and it has a lot of warrants within that one paragraph then that's fine you can tag it and you know the tag should be about a sentence but you should allow the actual text to give warrant and credence to your argument and give credence to your tag so if you do have a small, if you do have a card that's really, really just one, that's really small and it's just one paragraph, you don't have to beef that card up with, uh, don't make the tag longer than the card. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> don't do that. Um, cards, remember, should help you assist in making your argument. And the cards, when you think about the text and how much of an excerpt you should cut, it's, the card should be a complete thought. Right. So it shouldn't break into um, different thoughts. And so, so like in this particular book, right, that I'm cutting towards the end of the book, the chapters were um, were like maybe two or three pages. And so when I thought about it, I'm like, I'm not going to cut up this chapter to like multiple cards. That's 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 stupid. I said I can just create a longer tag. And those those pages that chapter uh, those chapters that were small just became one particular card. So I didn't make that one chapter several cards. I just made that one chapter one card because it, it's a it's a complete thought. I can break it into maybe three parts or two main points or maybe one main point. And um, but depending upon what that particular card is saying, it should be about no more than three points that you are outlining in your argument for one particular card. Don't cut the cards in such a way that it misrepresents the argument or the thought of the author. So don't be cutting the card, leaving out stuff or um, purposely uh, cutting it in such a way that, you know, it is not sounding like the way that the author intended it to sound. Um, also highlight and underline the parts you plan on reading within the debate. That's really important. Um, for you to like, when you think about like, oh, you think if you're like cutting something, you're not, not sure where to cut it at, you know, start cutting some, start underlying some of the underlining, some of the important parts that you're reading. And then from there, you can see, oh, if I have a, a lot that's underlined right here, then that's something you cut, 
right? Because if you have a lot underlined, then you can make that a card, right? Um, also, um, <laughs> choose a legitimate, excuse me, not a legitimate, but yes, legitimate and legible font. Don't use Cosmic Sans. Don't be, look, I understand you want to be cute, but, you know, use something that's legible. Understand you're going to be using this in debate. So don't have graffiti art in your briefs and in your tags, okay? Thinking about citation, you must cite. This, when you write a paper for Mr. Gonzalez or any one of your teachers, right, they are expect or any of your, Mr. Noah, whomever, whatever school you're at, when you're writing an essay or any type of argumentative paper or any type of informative speech, you have to cite your sources. And in debate, we do the same thing. You must cite your sources, right? So in the late format. Yep. And in debate, we use a different type of format. And I'm going to show you that here. So the, the format goes as shown. So the, uh, the citation is basically the source or the text or the material that you, that's being read. So if I was reading this book, this is written by the author is Paulo Freer. Um, he is an he's an educator, so that would be his qualifications. This was public. This book was uh, published by Bloomsbury, so I write that. The date of the publication is in here somewhere. I don't know. It was, it was, first uh, under the first page, under the cover. Near the table I think it's I think it's 1970. We're gonna go with 1970. All right. So that's the date of the publication. And then the page number will be like, let's say I, I cut from page 53 to 55. That was one particular card, right? So that's the format. So you always use this format <laughs> with cards for policy debate citation. It does not look similar to MLA and it does not look similar to APA or Chicago. It is just how it's seen there. It's a different type of citation. So please follow that citation there. Um, but also remember, like this is again, you use this in schools. The, the, th the things that we do in debate mirror a lot of what you do in schools. So just understand we just have to tweak it a little bit. But these things and these skill sets, these soft skills always cross over. Here's an example of a citation that we use in debate. Um, so, uh, you know, you say Whitaker 2. Um, this is my boss. She said this in 21. It was posted on our website. Um, it, she was. She had made some type of argument in the novice pack that we produced. So, yeah. So that is a full citation. You would read Whitaker 21, but this is not an acceptable citation that you will be giving to your opponents or to a judge. You can have this for yourself, but this is not acceptable when you're producing and creating briefs because this is what we're, we're talking about creating briefs today. So this is not acceptable. Whitaker 21, you need a full citation. And this is the type of, these are, if you're using a web address, this is how you do a citation. If you're using a web address for a uh, debate, as you can see, this is also a web address. Please keep the full citation nearby. You know, again, you can do this for your own files, Whitaker 21, but make sure you publish the full citations for um, evidence and files that you're gonna create for the public because they need those full citations so that they can make sure that when they're when they're working with a judge or an opponent that their arguments have integrity and that they're not um, performing in debate with the, the potential of someone thinking that they're plagiarizing. Um, so yeah, so make sure that you, pro repro uh, you produce and reproduce those files. Um, Ensuring that those files that are being reproduced has those full citations. Yes, Ella. If um, if you're cutting a card from a book, but you have an online version, what do you, you can you can you can you can cite it using the online version, um, citation, or you can do the Berkman. It doesn't really matter. But if you're do, if you if you're using it from the, sometimes PDF versions, depending on translation. It's just best if you get it from a PDF and if you get it from online, you just do it as a web citation. What if I don't have a PDF version? If you're getting it from online, then it's more than likely gonna be a PDF version. If you're not, if it's coming from online and it's not a book, then you would um, cite it as an article. Instead no, of but like I have a book and so um, I wanted to put it on a Google doc. So I scanned it. Okay. 
Like, well, then you would just, you would just sign you if you scanned it in, then you would sign you would need to cite it as a book. Okay, how do I do that? You would just use the same citations as shown here. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Because it would still have the publication and the page numbers that you're using. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, here's another citation example. If you're using a, a web page. Of course, you um, you say if it's a if it's multiple authors, you only use the author's last names. So this author's last name is Barry, and this um, author's last name is Huckins, and you always do it in alphabetical order. So now, what do you think? What to highlight? What do you highlight? Highlight to make sentences. Highlight to make sense all, as well. You sh you should highlight to have complete thoughts. Do not clip cards, right? Do not remove portions of an ex of an excerpt. Um, now, let me let me let me clarify. If if there is, um, yeah, you shouldn't do. You should not clip cards, right? Do not remove portions of an excerpt. Now, sometimes what you can do is if there is like a if there is something there, you can you can say that there is, how do I put this? Like, let's say the, there's like a story in between a text, right? And you don't want to read that full out story. And it's like literally in screenplay format, right? If you don't want to like show that screenplay or that dialogue or that narration, right? Because sometimes if it's like a narration or an interview, you don't want to have that. You just want to have the text. You can be like, there was a narration here. Arthur continues with text here. You know what I'm saying? Or to be continued here. All right. I just want to make sure that I'm clear on that. So you, but, but do not clip cards in such a way that you're ruining the integrity of the evidence, if that makes sense. Yes, Harper. Are you allowed to, um, if the sentences are a bit weird, can you like highlight a certain part of the sentence, but not like others? Of, of course, now that you can do you, but you don't want to do it in a way that it changed the argument being made within the card, and you don't want to you you want to make sure that at, if you highlight it that that those cards are that those other words are there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So don't clip those words out that you don't intend to use, but just make sure you highlight the ones that you do tend to use. Yep. And um, you can also minimize the portions that you're not reading. So if you're um, cutting cards digitally and like there's a paragraph that um, you're not going to read, instead of just going saying the author continues with, you can just minimize it to a small font to like nine or like eight. That's what I do. Also, remember the minimized portion of the text could be used against you by your opponent. So if you minimize something like it might make your opponent seem weird and, and leery, but also too like, Sometimes, a lot of times, you're minimizing words to hide certain things. Sometimes these authors are wishy-washy. So just be mindful that, like, you want to pick evidence where you don't have to do that, where you don't have to minimize things. Um, you want to pick evidence that if you did minimize it, that what's being minimized is not going to, you know, alter your your position or your stance within the debate. Some, like I said, minimized portions can be a red flag. Uh, but scan the text um, that's um, unread. Um, and sometimes see if you can use it for your next speech. You can circle and bold in buzzwords, you know, you know what I'm saying, um, outside of what's already been highlighted. So you can hit those passion words, those powerful, persuasive words. H again, highlight to make sense. And again, like Harper was asking, you can Frankenstein, um, meaning you can hodgepodge sentences together. They don't have to be full. You don't have to highlight full sentences. Right, you can Frankenstein those sentences together. So as you can see, here's an example of how you can highlight. See, I didn't highlight that, but it's a part of a sentence. I didn't um, start again until another sentence. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, you can um, Frankenstein how you um, highlight. Here they, in my opinion, I don't know who did this, but I would minimize this Sorry, 
I would minimize this because you're not reading this. You have to read it here in 2018. So I would minimize this and then I would um, enlarge in the, the author because I'm reading that. You're not reading this. You're not reading their credentials and HTTP. They don't need to read all. You don't, they don't need to need all that. You can give the judge or your opponent this information post debate, the debate round being finished. So that's an example of a highlight. How, thinking about good, how to, how do you um, think about making good tags? So the card you tag should mirror the evidence. The, uh, it should be congruent to what the actual text is saying. The tag should um, summarize the content of the card. The content of the card should help you. The content of the card should help your larger argument. Remember to ask yourself, does it fulfill your parts? Does it fulfill a link story? Does it fulfill an impact story? The tag should be persuasive and, and, and should uh, uh, enrich the thesis of the cut literature. So yeah, the tag should be um, describing some of the main points of the debate and should speak to the thesis of what the text is saying. Um, never beef up the evidence. So your tag shouldn't sound better than the evidence. You know what I mean? Your tag should be speaking to what the evidence is saying. Um, don't overstate your argument. Don't exaggerate your argument. The tag should the tag should describe the functions and the purpose of the card. Like again, is this a link card, inherency card? Like, is this a turn argument? Um, you know, does this help you create some um, impact analysis? Are you outweighing something? Is there probability or something? Like, what what is the purpose of the card? Um, and then, um, uh, the text should, um, uh, the text should highlight the offensive arguments that you have within the debate. Um, don't simply re restate the evidence. The evidence is to support your larger claims. What are you to gain from using this evidence? So remember, that's, that's what you want to think about. You want to create a brief for you, you to read for yourself, but also, um, a brief that can be you know utilized for the public and can be reproduced um you want to title your briefs and um as subtitles and you know parts um and you know you want to subtitle the parts sorry um and title the parts um extend your arguments while addressing your opponent's arguments as well when you're making your a brief so make sure that you're letting the judge know what you are what you are addressing also, remember in your um, front lines and in your briefs, you want to make sure that you're signposting your arguments. When making your briefs, you should um, your briefs should be congruent with your overviews and your underviews. So, if you have like overviews and underviews, your briefs should be congruent with those. Um, so, if you have like um, a brief for a dissad, a brief for a counter plan, you want to make sure that they are in alignment with your overviews as well. Make digital briefs that do not include your analytical arguments and only your cards for card disclosure. You want to make sure that when you're um, disclosing the evidence, you're not disclosing your analyticals. You're only disclosing so your evidence. So make sure you have um, a digital um, version that you're able to share within um, an email thread and that they only have your evidence and not your actual analytics. Um, your brief should include uh, analytical and, ref and reflective art and reflective arguments. So you know you want to be reflecting on the other team's arguments, and you want to be critical and analytical about what's happening in the debate. You should consider attacking their parts. So follow the line by line. You know, are you are you attacking? You know, link. You know, is this a link answer? You know, is this an answer to a dissed? So here's an example of a brief. So as you can see here, it says the school name, school code. It actually says Emory, <laughs> with, but with the O. Um, Emory is a university in Atlanta. Anyways, um, it says it says court's counter plan answers. So it's titled. It tells you how many pages there are for this brief. It tells you again what what type of argument. You know, you see the you see the analyticals there. You see there's an analytical. And then you also see like how each argument is signposted. So the, their first argument is permute. 
Their second argument is about theory on counterplay and fiat. They have a turn. That's their third argument. So all their arguments are signposted and listed. And then also too, like, um, yeah, like you can see that there's cars there within the, uh, oh, it's UC Berkeley, ha ha. Um, do you see that my hood, woo, woo, I'm sorry. Um, there is, you can see that there's evidence here too. And you can see that there's the author, the like correct citations, um, sub points when necessary. Um, you can also like, I don't know, you can also like, sometimes I would put my school mascot so I would know it's, it's mine. Um, and yeah, so these are things to think about when creating a brief page numbers, um, you know, bolding things to, you know, really, really show the things that are important. Think about the what part of the card should be read and around. It says here, yep, use analytical arguments and evidence. Be reflective about the date. That's the same thing I said. And make sure you label things and signposts. So, yeah. All right. So that's the end of my presentation on card cutting. Um, there is more to be learned about card cutting and briefing, particularly when thinking about how to find stuff using Google searches and search engines. Um, I have to re refresh myself on that particular not on that particular knowledge. So let me do some research. <laughs> I wasn't I didn't know um, that stuff like the back of my hand like I do this particular topic. So I'll um, try to get a. I know I've been saying I was going to do that, but I'll get a video or a presentation made um, about how to really use search engines to really filter um, and how to cast the, the net to find the evidence that you need in order to make briefs. Um, so yeah, um, if you have not gotten on Slack, please get on Slack. That's how we communicate. That's how we um, disperse information about um, activities. That's how we disperse information um, about um, um, opportunities, resources made available to students. If you have any questions um, and you're watching this video via our YouTube page, uh, again, Slack is the way to get in, in contact with me, but also you can send me an email. Um, Sakai also is the high school policy person. So if you want to ask Sakai and you attend those novice practices and you watch this video and you want to ask Sakai questions about um, anything that you see here, please um, don't be scared to ask Sakai. If Sakai doesn't know, I'm sure she'll send me a message and I'll shoot that presentation over to her. Also too, if you look at the descriptions of this video, that presentation will be able for you, you will be able to view that pre this presentation. Um, if you just find the link in the description, you'll be able to view um, this presentation for your leisure and your discretion. And yes, please make sure you visit our, our practices um, again. Thursdays, like we're meeting tonight. This is where we at on Zoom. Uh, middle school and novices, they meet on Wednesdays. Um, so our middle schoolers meet from 3.30 to 5.30, and they do public forum for our policy novices. Our emerging new, new debaters, they meet Wednesdays from 4 to 6. If you're interested in um, travel opportunities, if you're interested in civic engagement opportunities, if you're interested in um, traveling, um, if you're interested in, you know, getting your volunteer hours done for college, whatever, um, please um, come visit us on Fridays. If you want to advance and learn more, we also talk about even more um, coursework on those Fridays. So please join us Fridays online as well. That's the end of my presentation on card cutting. Again, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me via email. And then, yes, does anyone have any questions? All right, we'll end it there. Mm -hmm.